What's up guys, TechLab here. So in our last video, we took a look at the NVIDIA GT710, and in particular, the ones that are fitting into these super fast gaming PCs that you can buy on eBay or Amazon. Now in that video, we actually took a look at some of the options you'd have if you was unfortunate enough to buy one, because those systems really won't play the games that they're actually advertising them with. One of the options we gave was actually upgrading the system. We suggested taking something like the GT710 out of the system and replacing it with something like the GTX 550 Ti. And the reason we suggested that is because if you're buying one of these systems, you're generally on a really tight budget. Now these tend to go for roughly about £20, so you could resell it on. Whereas the GTX 550 Ti's, you can pick them up for around £25 to £30 second hand. But in this video, we wanted to have a look at whether it was an actual significant upgrade. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like these videos. And also feel free to join the Discord community. I'll drop a link in the description below. So this is a GT710 that we used in the demo system when we actually did a bit of benchmarking in the last video. It's a 2GB card with a 954MHz base clock and it's passively cooled. So it's generally very quiet, but it's not actually really designed for gaming. On the other hand, we have the GTX 550 Ti. Now this is a reference model and it has a 900 megahertz clock speed with only one gigabyte of memory. And it also requires an extra additional power socket to power it. Now we wanted to see whether there was actually a significant difference between these cards. So the best way of doing that is actually getting it in the system and benchmarking it. So we swapped it out, dropped the new one in, and decided to run the same games as we did before in the exact same settings. Now first up, we decided to try the, one of the most demanding games that we did before, and that is Off-Road Drive. Now this game originally produced around 30 frames per second with the GT710, but with the same settings in 720, and that's uh, medium settings, we managed to actually get around 60. Now this game appears to be actually restricted to 60 frames per second, and we couldn't actually change that and get it any higher, so it could only suggest that it could do more than that. Up next was the second most demanding game which was Halo Wars. Now Halo Wars isn't really a hugely demanding game usually but in this case it really tested the GT710. But on the GTX 550 Ti we managed to get a fra average frames per second of 68 which was actually quite good for the settings. Another game that we decided to try was actually slightly on the bottom end of that scale. The first one being Half-Life 2, which we got over 401 frames per second, which is not too bad, but considering that game will pretty much run on anything, it really demonstrated that the 55 Ti has still got a bit of uh, oomph in it yet. And then we had Bioshock, which again isn't the most demanding game, but we managed to pull off a 229 frames per second. So as you can see from the graph, there is a significant improvement all round on all the games that we played. But if you're buying one of these systems, particularly because they've advertised it all with the Fortnite and all the AAA titles they would play, you're wanting to know whether it would actually play any of those games now. So we decided to do a bit of benchmarking with something that they advertise it with. And we decided to do it with Fortnite. Now Fortnite's not the most demanding game of all, particularly with its performance modes, but we decided to test it in all of the settings using 720p because that's particularly what these cards like. And this is what we got. So as you can see from those benchmarks, Fortnite actually did play on both cards and it played reasonably well in all settings. Obviously, once you start actually increasing the settings for the GT710, the actual playability of the game becomes very low and you're not going to have a good experience at all. But the GTX 550 Ti actually did hold up quite well. It gave you a reasonably playable game through all of the settings, particularly in 720p. So in conclusion, for the fact that this card can actually only cost you £25 to £30, and you could probably get £20 back on eBay for this one, 
it's pretty much a good card to be able to swap out when you're on these super tight budgets. It increases everything nearly double in frames per second, particularly at the 720 setting, which would actually allow you on a lot of the games to boost up that resolution into 1080 and you would still get a playable performance. Is it the ideal solution for these machines? Probably not, because there is eventually you're going to hit some kind of limit with some of the rest of the machine. In particular, the one we were using was an i5-2320, which is a very old processor now, and eventually you're going to be able to run out of steam on that processor. But it does mean that you're going to get a little bit more life and expand that catalogue and library of games that you can play with the system that you bought. So if you still use a GTX 550 Ti in your system, let me know in the comments what games you play. What would you recommend that we can actually really test this graphics card, but we still have a great playable game? Make sure you like the video if you like the content, and I'll see you again soon.